I love seeing people's first milestone keys. And this is somebody we have done multiple video reviews for in the past. The latest one we did Grim Rail Depot back on her Blood DK. Now she's playing a healer. And this is her first time ever healing a 20. Uh, gave a lot of praise towards me encouraging healing. And before we start the video, I will say the same to anybody out there. If especially you're a tank and you're trying to learn you know, more about what tanks can and can't do. A really good way to do that is to get in there and see it yourself, but you'll only ever see it from your perspective. So uh, it could be really healthy to learn from the healing role and just monitor what other tanks are doing. And then what you can do is you can like dissect, like, does this guy make a good decision? Do I think this is a decision I can learn from? Do I think this is a decision that I can emulate? Stuff like that. Uh, but yeah, first time healing in the process of doing that. And uh, yeah, low confidence, not uh, somebody who's like super, like then they go on to do more keys and then they immediately feel like they're not at the level they want to be kind of thing. But this is under raw. It's one of the easiest dungeons in the game right now, although that has statistically fallen. Um, so you guys who might play healer, you guys who might play, especially uh, evoker healer, please comment a bit. Uh, you know, the same uh, stuff always gets brought up. The UI is always a complete mess, but hey, who am I to speak? So uh, anyway, that's uh, yeah, up to you guys what you want to comment on that. But leave some comments on uh, ways to potentially improve. She talked about then doing free old 21 after this. And uh, she said she didn't feel like she was like able to handle the burst healing and, you know, all that stuff there going on. Free old, obviously a hard dungeon on Tyrannical. Uh, we had a lot of trouble with Underrot um, this week. i had done a bunch of Underrot keys, and they didn't go well. We even did a 25 Underrot that just was not in time. Like, we had a couple deaths, but, yeah, just, like, straight up didn't didn't come close to being in, in time. So this dungeon's harder than it looks, but on a 20, obviously right now 20s, yeah, very easy. If you look at Raider IO, you'll see that the uh, both the tank and the Rep Pally are way, uh, well, the Rep Pally especially, way overqualified for this key. And that's kind of why they're so easy, because uh, people have surpassed them now to such a degree that, uh, you know, they're multiple levels higher, but then uh, they still want to get their weeklies done, maybe, so you can get them into your keys, especially while pugging. So this is like the best part about pugging, is sometimes you get groups that are better than they should be, and a lot of times you get groups that are worse than they should be, but in general, uh, yeah, you can potentially benefit from that greatly, so that is... Ultimately, what's going to happen here, but of course, it is just a 20. I think, like, any character, any player is able to do it. Like, we've been taking, I mean, we took a Holy Pally from 0 to 20 in one week, and then we've now taken the Fresh Blood DK. I've already done uh, multiple 20s and 22. I think we even did, like, a 22 now. Uh, but anyway, um, yeah, what's going on with that UI stuff on the left? That's always, that's always something. <laughs> Okay, so yeah, Lusting on the first pack, totally like that. I'm not sure if that was us as the Evoker or if that was the Resto or the Enhanced Shaman or whatever it is. Uh, but I always recommend that. So if you're not doing that, definitely, no matter what week it is, Lust on the first pack. Because it just makes the dungeon go a lot easier. Then you don't have to be running back and forth worrying about Lust for this middle and second part of the boss here. Uh, I don't necessarily ever see any value in Lusting on this boss. But if you know you have a good plan, like in a pug, I don't think it's worth it. But if you have a group that really wants to, uh, you know, they're fine with it, that guy gets hit by that. I've actually had that happen to me as well. Uh, let me go back and look at that because I'm so confused how that happens. But anyway, if you really want to lust on this boss and you have like a pre-made group, then it's fine. But I think he's just standing next to the yeah, they're just all. I don't know. This happened to me a few times where it doesn't look like it should hit me and it hits me. Creeping rot. He gets hit by Creeping Rat, but he also uh, he also has the Blood Bolt. So every time the Blood Bolt hits you as a tank, you get a stacking absorb, a healing absorb. So I guess this is kind of the healer's job, right? But as a Blood DK, obviously, you're probably fine. You can see the chart on the top left. Uh, yeah, 130k HPS compared to 18k. But that's, I mean, not really abnormal. Um, but uh, this is kind of something to keep in mind. As the healer on this fight, you do need to heal off that i think but with blood decay like i said it's not really gonna stay on very long so in general though obviously a little bit more dps would be nice 6k if you're not breaking like 10k right now I, it's just you're just not really trying um so definitely on especially on a boss like this this is like a zero mechanic boss right like there's almost nothing to do blood decay is 
soloing the fight effectively pretty much can solo the fight this is a very very easy fight especially ams you can just ams the uh applications you don't even need to interrupt them um yeah we can just get a lot more damage in here so and that that's gonna add up like as a healer i would say like the number one thing especially when i play blood dk i notice is healers who are just not healing me or dpsing which is exactly what we did there like what what are we doing we just afk right like it's a pet peeve of mine uh, maybe i over talk about it but it's a pretty big pet peeve honestly because i know as a bloody k i bring something to the group that um you know should allow the healer to be freed up uh both like mentally and also you know just in terms of free globals um so you got to use that to your advantage when you're playing with bloody k there'll be situations where bloody k is not a good pick alongside healers and maybe this is one of them um, I don't really know exactly how Evoker is playing right now. In Season 1, Evoker looked like the best spec in the game to play with Blood DK. Uh, because they had like a, a couple CDs. Th those things still all exist. But a couple of things that Blood DK really wanted. Especially the ability to clear bleeds. Uh, but their damage was also really, really, really high. And apparently that was because of their, their force set or something like that from Season 1. And so they lost that. In season two and now they don't do any damage i guess so um or they do a lot less than other healers now so it's kind of a weak pick i don't know i can't see myself playing the spec but i haven't really looked at it looks like it's maybe mana issues too i don't know we're just like constantly low mana uh we have like 30 percent mana right now not exactly sure if that's just because we're choosing to like not drink or if that's normal or what but um yeah i don't know the spec seems like it's yeah there's just Holy Pally and there's just everything else. And I felt that way for a very long time. Like, people talk about the strength of Holy Pally uh, being their throughput or even their, like, offensive throughput. I, I, it's just not that to me. The, the strength of it is how easy the spec is to play. They have so many answers to so many normal Mythic Plus problems. You know, all the burst damage is going to be reduced because of Diva Aura. Uh, you also have, obviously, Aura Mastery uh, for the Diva Aura on top of that to reduce it further if you can predict it well. Incredible burst healing. You have the burst heal in the game, right? It's lay on hands, always going to be sat there. Uh, you have things like low CD sack, a lot of physical immunity, bop, and obviously for yourself, you can bubble. Holy Pally is just it. So I think you really want to, um, you know, if you're trying to push as a healer and you're not like super in love with a certain spec, you probably want to at least play it a little bit. Because it could probably teach you a lot about what your class is, is lacking uh, and what you can learn and, you know, how you can grow as a healer. Just by playing Holy Pally right now, you'll see a lot of situations open up all of a sudden. We actually fly over and aggro that extra Swarmer. This guy's trying to do... It's just not worth it, especially on a 20. This guy's a little bit worried probably about uh, bolstering. Uh, these blood swarmers getting bolstered is very bad like the worst thing in the dungeon i would say uh, but it just doesn't really matter especially it's blood decay because you can constantly grip them back uh, and there's like a dead zone where they can't get to you but that's kind of complicated to explain without showing it done but yeah there's actually a way that you can kite those without ever taking damage from them but almost nobody tries to do that people just sit there and get meleeed so uh are we gonna try to do it again oh wow he's gonna Really? He's going to again elect to not pull the Blood Swarmer. <laughs> this guy's really... Oh, just kidding. We pulled it. All right. So now it's guaranteed to get bolstered, right? When you do it like that, now it's guaranteed to get bolstered. If you pull it at the start, it might not. But now that it's the highest health mob and everything else is half health, then yeah, that thing's going to be fully bolstered. But this is like an absolute romp of a key. Not necessarily what you'd expect for your first 20. Uh, if you're, you know, somebody who feels like there is a first 20 milestone. But at the same time, this is kind of what you'd expect from your first one. Oh, because she thinks she thinks they're pulling this boss, but no, no, no. No, no, we're moving on. So, yeah, you shouldn't drink here. That's slowing everybody down pretty substantially. Uh, but anyway, yeah, no, this is easy mode. Under rot. I know tyrannical in here can be hard. Obviously, way harder than fortified in here. But, uh, yeah, it's just, especially on the lower keys... Straightforward, just don't make any stupid mistakes. The big biggest you know, the biggest issue has been Spore Caller Zancha. I'm actually surprised at how that boss has just been carving up groups almost to the point where uh it seems like if you like don't have somebody who can deal with the failure on that boss, good luck. Like that might actually be the hardest boss. Having paladins, having things that could disease dispel, having things that could immune 
like Mage or Paladin. These things are very valuable. But we constantly have people doing very dumb things. Like this week, we actually had a, a disband over because um, the Mage had, the like, two players got Mage and Shadow Priest. Mage actually dies, kind of like dies before it comes out, but it still goes on him. I didn't really fully understand that. I guess it's a long time before it actually hits him. So he just dies, like, coincidentally. And then the Shadow Priest is now standing next to nothing because it looked like the Mage was going to handle it, but the Shadow Priest doesn't recognize that. So there's like six mushrooms that just don't get broken because the mage died and the shadow priest doesn't move. And we what? Like that's just move over. Like, I mean, it's so obvious to me, but it's easier said than done. I think people just tunnel vision a lot on that boss. It's really just about good positioning and uh, overly being cautious. That's it. Just don't get hit by anything and always break every mushroom possible. And if you're a class that can dispel... You could run through a couple of them and then instantly dispel yourself. But just be aware, they do do a lot of damage up front. So don't do that and kill yourself, which we've also seen <laughs> also seen this week. Somebody run through like four of them and then they just died before they can dispel themselves. Uh, yeah, okay, anyway. Hardest boss in here in practice. Uh, maybe not in theory. In theory, obviously, Kragma should be much, 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 much harder. But I think because Evoker, a lot of people playing... Uh, augmentation now, that speed buff is really making that fight a lot easier. You don't realize how important having the speed buff there is because the healer then has to run less, the healer then has to heal less because there's an augmentation evoker. Like, it's actually the hard counter to that fight. Like, everything augmentation brings there is really good for that fight. So, this is very common. I don't know how many people see this. I, I have this comment asked a lot in my stream. Like, why are you going back here? The answer is because Bloodlust's boss is like the best Bloodlust target in the game. Every time it does one of its uh, tantrums, there's almost no DPS being able to be done. Okay. So like Bloodlust allows you to cut those phases off of the fight. And that is really valuable. Definitely as a healer, we definitely need to be doing the, uh, the maggots here. That is a really pretty much super lazy uh, right there because there's nothing to heal, literally. If you're not going to do DPS, you got to do the mechanics. Uh, but anyway, my point was cutting off these mechanics is like the most valuable time-wise in the whole dungeon. And it's also typically a very hard fight to heal. Every time those phases happen, you typically see the healer expend a lot of mana. Uh, but again, all of those things have been dramatically lessened by what Ogvoker is bringing right now. And it's just like an awkward phase. You see, everybody's all split up. We got people so far away that we can't heal them. Uh, but yeah, we're, we're making the best out of it. And it looks like we're going to actually get away uh, with the healer breaking none. And it's tough to heal and do that at the same time. So typically in this phase, I would expect very little effort. And yeah, I don't know. I, I cannot imagine enjoying healing this fight as a spec like this. Because they have the limited range. And it, I don't fully understand how they work. But it does look like... A group that's all split up and spread out that would be hell to heal uh, on evoker so uh, but anyway it's really uh it's all chalk looks like we got red pally and we got shaman not doing very well oh we didn't lust oh we didn't lust i just realized looking at the dps wow okay so yeah all right so this one thing another huge pet peeve of me of mine not gonna lie it's like if you guys are playing lust classes and you have just no idea when to lust probably just stop doing keys for a bit and then just go maybe think about that or something like that. Cause that's, I know we got a shaman in the group too. So that's his bad too, but it's like, yeah. Okay. Lusting right now is that's horrible. That's like a, just a complete waste of it. You should have just saved it at this point. In fact, absolutely should have saved it. That was a terrible call on his part. Uh, really, really, really bad call. Cause the Zancha is a fight that doesn't necessarily not want lust. And we're clearly going to have lust up, uh, two more times in this dungeon so using it right then is just a really not well i don't know i guess it helps healing a little bit here but as we see I, i'm not even sure healing is needed like i don't think you actually need to heal this space <laughs> i don't know this is uh the game's in a weird state right now so historically one of the hardest healing fights in the game uh strategically always very difficult because of all the movement but in terms of numerically it doesn't seem like you know, I, I don't think they actually nerfed 20, right? Like, I know they nerfed key scaling, but I don't think 20 changed, right? It's just 21 and higher that changed, or is it also 20 that changed? 
I can't imagine 20 changed then because then there would be this weird jump from 19 to 20 that was like nothing, right? I don't really know, but anyway, yeah. So Joke Mode Fight. Yeah, I mean, it looks like nobody even actually requires... Like, that, that Shadow Priest doesn't even die and never seem to get any direct healing, so... Yeah, okay. But, like, you know, people are... Um, like, if there's two less in the group, you always see, like... So this this is funny how this happens, right? The uh, the BM Hunter refuses to lust because there's a Resto Shaman. Well, the Resto Shaman... What the hell does that say? Any, oh, anyway, yeah. He died, I get it. The Resto Shaman might say, well, I refuse to use the mana on it. You know what I mean? Just use the spell. Like, if you're in a pug, do not expect somebody else to do something that you can do. It's just not good. It's just a bad idea. You're in a pug group, man. It's not likely... And it could cause an argument, you know what I mean? And it can cause a lot of maybe, you know, petty stuff happening after that. See how much damage that does. That's just okay. But yeah, so if you're going to do that, you got to instantly dispel yourself. Basically, hover over the dispel and then instantly click it the second you're, you're done. Two stacks, so almost killed her. But yeah, it would have been fine if we just dispelled. A little dangerous for the healer to be doing it, frankly. Especially if you're not paladin. And just not needed. That was pointless. Literally pointless. Uh, the DK can soak every single one of these without issue. Paladin goes and takes two as well, but he is going to die also. Now he's got bubble. Bop is not going to help him there, I don't think. But yeah, he's got bubble up. Doesn't use it. Welcome to the 3K club. Paladin dying with bubble up. <laughs> Soaking things that bubble could have used, been used to soak. Not using it. Taking damage from him. Then dying with bubble up. <laughs> That's life. That's pugging as a DPS right now, man. It's kind of wild. But yeah, anyway, we have a, a pretty quick... This is a... Yeah, man, I guess it's just really 20. Like, the DPS is terrible, but the boss is already at 59%. 56k from two people. Is that, is that good? Bloody K competing for third there, but slowly behind the Shadow Priest, so... Okay, but yeah, Paladin keep doing that. I, I th the thing about Paladin is you can literally just soak every single one of them. Uh, just you can just uh, bubble, or maybe even not bubble immediately, but just basically get on that horse, mount up on that horse thing, press that bubble button, and run around every single one of them broken. Same thing with uh, well, I guess uh, maybe Paladin's the only one who could do that. Yeah, Bloody Gay could potentially do a lot of them, but AMS will eventually break. So I can get probably four or five of them. And maybe on this level I can get a lot more. See, he did it that time. He could have got a lot more, but he just his bubble ended, I guess. So, all right, but yeah, this fight is definitely easier with Paladin, definitely easier with classes that can dispel, and definitely easier with classes with immunities in general. So, but Blood DK really overpowered because AMS is up for every uh, one of these phases, and you can break multiple mushrooms without getting the debuff yourself. Every single time. So he, now he's going to use AMS to prevent the damage from that phase, which is a good idea. If you did not use it to get a mushroom, you can then just use it to not take any damage from that middle phase, like that explosion part. And that's a bigger deal than you think, because if four people only need healing instead of five people, then it's a lot easier to heal. Uh, so anyway, yeah. Um, not really sure what's going on with the UI stuff. Like, what what's with the question mark? I don't really know. Maybe a little bit of use uh, to try to get some better UI going. I know it's a you know it's a common talking point here, and I do think it matters. Like, you know, people talk about my UI um, not being good all the time, but like those people are usually just people who don't understand why the UI is what it is. My UI shows everything exactly. Uh, you know, it's large and it's in the exact like peripheral vision that I need to be able to not only see it when I'm reading chat, but also while I'm tanking. Um, and so I think like that is key. Like just having the right information on your screen at the right time is absolutely key. Um, and, and when you have information that you don't need, like the racials CDs, like I, doesn't that confuse to me, that would confuse the hell out of me. If I have like spells on my screen that I don't even care about the CD of, it would just confuse the hell out of me. Um, so always, always something to think about. Like, I think it's a better, I think it's a bigger tip than people make it, make it, make you think it is. Cause not knowing exactly when your CDs are up and what you're, you know, what you're tracking is definitely, it, it makes a big difference. So 
But anyway, yeah, it's an easy key. Uh, obviously, we're going to have no issues here. I don't think we needed this mob, did we? Pretty sure you don't need this. Yeah, you, you didn't. You can actually, maybe the people don't know that, but you can actually not pull that. Um, you can actually skip that whole pack if you wanted to, but it's unlikely to happen in a pug. Uh, and then, yeah, you're good on count. But this mob has definitely got to get interrupted. Uh, dark Echoes, especially bolstered, will just rip the group up. We want to try to dispel that. There we go. We got that off you. Pretty much uh, chalk here, man. It's easy mode. You see how easy this can be? Tyrannical, this is probably the hardest week in the game. This is the week that I had the 90% disband rate as well. 98% uh, or whatever it was. Um, yeah. Really bad uh, week the first time around. But this time around, it was certainly a lot easier for us. Mostly because we didn't do as many keys, I think. But uh, yeah, it's just been nerfed. And you know the game is in a state now where it seems to just get easier every patch. Even raid. People are talking about raid being easier and easier. So... Um, Somebody whispers are saying they cannot hear me. Is that not proof enough of your significance? I don't know who's who's whispering that. Um, kind of some kind of freak probably trying to get because they knew I was going to be uh, doing a review of the key. So yeah, I mean, hey, you got what you asked for there, bro. But probably chill with the weird, creepy whispers, man. Um, so this guy is dragging the mob down. We gotta oh. That could be so bad. Luckily, you don't get feared into another mob. I've seen that happen a lot. Shaman and Paladin are going to res. We're just going to heal up. and s Oh, you're full mana. We don't need to drink. Yeah. Good opportunity to drink if needed, but not needed today. So let's see the overall here. I'm excited to see what the numbers look like. Yeah, but yeah, we, we only need... Yeah, we didn't, we didn't even need those packs. Full of a too much extra count here. This is kind of common. Um, this is a strategy that uh, I think it's it's a safe pug route one way or the other. I'm not really sure what like the top groups are doing, but counting here is kind of a little squirrely. It's hard to get it on the dot unless you, uh, yeah, you, you take a little bit of caution of, along what you pull. And then you get people complaining that you're pulling too small. You know what I mean? So it's like, okay. In a pug, just go for it, and I don't think it's really ever going to stop you in most keys, but we did run into a situation in the 25 where we were over count, and we missed it by, like, well, it was more like three minutes, so I don't think the pull mattered that much, but, yeah, you know, partially on me for the routing, so. All right, eight minutes for this. Uh, yeah, not going to be a double upgrade, obviously, but Here's some really good advice. Stack with the tanks, do mechanics. That's a really good piece of advice there. Always, I would recommend never typing something like that just because if people don't know that by now, you're probably not going to teach it to them with one word. You know what I mean? And certainly the do mechanics part, I don't know. People seem like in good spirits in this key though, luckily. So, uh, But yeah, no lust for the pull. Um, so, you know, kind of... Proving to be uh, that no lust on that second boss was kind of a big mistake. But, again, not even remotely in, in problems here. We do have Shadow Priest for this fight. It's a really good fight to have a Shadow Priest. Uh, but as a healer, too, I do want to recommend you dispel that as much as possible. It is the only damage source on the fight, right? Like, th that's it. Unless somebody gets hit by that like they did. There's no other damage taken on the fight. So I always just dispel in, like, a staggered fashion. If it was me playing healer... Start with the top, second, third, fourth, and just keep kind of cycling with the spells until, you know, you get back to the top of the list. And what you're doing there is just mitigating the amount of healing you actually have to do. And uh, potentially, if somebody ends up not soaking, then you can start dispelling them, which happens to me all the time. I accidentally am not soaking as a tank, but I don't think it really ever matters as blood. But yeah, Holy uh, Shadow Priest as well for Master Spell, uh, which they could also be doing, but it doesn't look like they are. Um, but yeah, it's just not really needed. Super easy. Those blood visages don't even need to be killed anymore. Just straight up let the, 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 the robot dude, whoever that is. Not sure. Some Titan with some Zandalari stuff on, but they are so, they, like in the pat and BFA you used to have, have to actually like, kill them. Like it was like kind of important to grip one in. Now the, the guy just like almost one shots them. So, um, and yeah, just movement here is super important. Sometimes there will be some orbs coming in, and you can maybe help with that as the healer. I don't think so. But yeah, again, so like overall, like I would say like 
definitely got to get our DPS numbers up. Um, I know you're like worried about healing, but you're you're constantly just spam overhealing people who don't need any healing. And uh, even if like so, if you did the reverse, right? Like even if you let people die here, they have answers for those deaths, right? Like right now, we're not using the guy again dies with bubble available. The shadow priest doesn't use mass to spell. Uh, you know, a, b a bunch of different things here could have been used for those people to not die. So if you did the opposite, the key would probably have been over by now, right? If in all these situations you were just like doing as much DPS as you could have done, this probably would have been a double upgrade. You know what I mean? Because these guys have opportunities to save themselves. They're not using them anyway. So, and you're still not like, you know, and you still weren't able to save these people, right? If you look at it like that, that's kind of the season in a nutshell. That rep pally has multiple defensives he could have used to survive there. He didn't use any of them. You're spam healing. You're doing 2k DPS because you're so focused on, on using heals. And you still can't keep that guy alive. You know what I mean? That's kind of why people think healers are weak right now. That's kind of why people don't like healing right now. Um, I don't even know what's going on right now. We just, again, got to dispel. <laughs> Definitely recommend dispelling on that. But hey, super easy. 20. Congrats. 24 points. First 20 in time ever as a healer. All these years of playing a while. Let me know what you guys think. If you're especially playing Evoker, let me know if there's anything that they can be doing better. Uh, maybe, you know, anything. Whatever you think of. If you guys are out there doing your first key, milestone key, and you're worried about it, you're, you know, you're having a lot of stress about it, and you're finally accomplishing that goal, let me see it. I want to show it off, man. Even if I can't help you learn, I don't even, I just want you to get the recognition because it's badass when you meet your goals, when you're, the game is all about setting goals, setting accomplishments, and trying to go and get them. And that's exactly what we do here. So thank you for watching. We'll see you guys in the next one.